Does anyone have uh, any questions? I know I, I have some questions. Um, so I was curious, uh, with sim logic, are they planning to engineer uh, sort of like the gut microbiome, microbiome primarily? Or yeah, yeah so that was it. That's what they were focused on. Um, I can't remember what I haven't been diagnosed with the disease specifically you spoke about. Um, it was uh, a UCB. Uh, yeah. This surgery would have too much um, urea in some part of the body. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. But it's interesting that the bacteria is converting ammonia to arginine. So they're consuming ammonia, which would be turned into urea for blood. Is that a natural micro? I think they work mostly in Nissel, right? What's in Nissel? I mean, I talked to the guy, I know that that's a major workhorse for them. I don't know if that particular application was in that, but they usually use that. I was curious about the, the neochromosome. <coughs> How do they build the centromere for that? I don't know. They didn't give that detail. <laughs> um, that, actually, I, that actually might have been another team as well. I think they, the time else was just focusing on chromosome 11. Um, there's a lot of universities doing this. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I, I, I did think the coolest part of that talk was the, the lost piece sites. So basically just like letting the genome go and like optimize by scrambling in a million different ways. and like. They got it to adapt to certain environments, which is really cool. So, it's is, cool idea. is it like just balancing like rational design and then letting evolution is a really powerful tool so kind of work out the case? So. Right. There were a couple of other talks about sort of natural evolution and ways that you could create systems to just sort of put your whatever you wanted in your cells and sort of module and then sort of let evolution take its course and see what happened. So there were a couple of people who talked about that who had really cool things for E. coli and yeast. Lots of incredible protein engineering talks too. We like pressure to review them, but like we're getting really good at this. I don't know. There was like I don't know. I was just very impressed by like people making new receptors and and like making new binding sites that weren't even binding sites before. Um, like just engineering entirely new function into existing proteins. And, uh, that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the fruit roll-up? Yeah, yeah, that's that's roll yeah. yeah, that was a really cool. Um, it seems like it's something that has a lot of potential. It's just, well, you know, they've only published one paper on it from Pan's lab. So. They, they were saying the like method of the environment in which, which it's synthesized can influence its dimensions. So it'll wrap tighter or looser depending on how it's synthesized. And sometimes if it's synthesized like not quite, the right conditions, it won't totally be able to form. But the spiral will be too tight to actually form a tube. Uh, anything with like a slinky sort of thing. But um, yeah, I just thought it was really cool. So it, the dimensions can actually, the diameter can vary a little bit because of that. So. And the standard diameter is something like 500 nanometers. So it's a on a cell cellular scale, it's a really big roll up. Right? <laughs> You're fitting it inside of an endosymbiote, which are usually not very big. Significant portion of the cell is devoted. By volume, that protein structure, and it's covalently connected. It's not like actin or it seems like it gets put together and then it's gonna stay there. Yeah, she did. She kind of went quickly through it. It's covalently assembled. So. I don't really think they understand the assembly mechanism. That was something they wanted to learn more about. Right. But they could very easily break it, but they couldn't rationally design like different diameters or different lengths. Or different pH sensitivity for the transition. And it's reversible too. That's what's also cool yeah. about it. Yeah, she showed these really cool videos. We just like going through. Know, <laughs> they have those published. Should find them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's also their cool. article on BioArchive as well, so they might have some. I didn't compare what they used. Made it into a publication versus what was submitted. What was her plug for to at the end of her talk? She's sort of like a science, uh, open science activist as well. And then she had a certain project that she's working on for that. Yes. It's time to throw some of the bio right? Right. Similar idea. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
they seem to be like very easily getting it into viral delivery vectors. That's not the problem. Um, the problem is like off target effects that we have, seems like. Um, and so really we need to find ways to figure out how to make sure it's cleaving just in the place you want it to be is like a major challenge. And then they're I'm trying to get them to talk to me about regulatory issues with a human <laughs> and like they kind of skirt around the question. But like I think that's probably I know there's clinical trials with AAP, but I think that's probably one of their sort of barriers. Yeah, I, 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 kind of going off of specificity, you had talked about CPF1 in a couple of your papers. Do you know, like, so it has more specificity, I think, but do you know if it's as versatile as Cas9? Like, all you need is two guanine uh, nucleotides. Yeah, so with CPF1, the, the PAM recognition site is different. It's like ATT. So, okay. yeah, it works great for um, ATT. It's, it's, and it's cleavage of vitamin is like slightly lower than 12 and a half But you do need an ATT. Yeah, it's three different Yeah, or T, yeah. TT or ATT. Yeah. Well, the, the other one I wanted to bring up is the organ on a chip talk um, by Mimic. What's it? Emulate. Emulate Bio, yeah, which is actually a company. And so they were able to synthesize these. Um, chips that are actually like flexible and they're able to code human cells on both sides of a membrane um, and actually like recapitulate organ functions using those and they use this flexible chips to get some of the like tactile response of the cells so they can like make artificial lungs is they, that was one of their talks was on it is so they can have like endothelial and epithelial and then they can put in leukocytes which will go through the membranes and get bacteria on the other side which involves so much like signal cascading, it's incredible. So, and then for the whole time the thing is just like flexing back and forth because the chip is malleable. So, which helps them get like more organ like functions. But I thought that was a really cool talk. And that was industrial. Yeah, I guess if that's it, uh, the, there's a very exciting um, next GMOG meeting a month from now. So our own Professor Lori Zolos um, from uh, Feinberg and, and from Emerson campus will be speaking about the Human Genome Project uh, right. So if you've heard about this, the Human Genome Project um, genome has been read, but now there's a new effort to try to write it um, to synthesize a human genome de novo and, and uh, put it into cells or potentially more than that. So she'll be speaking right here a month from now. Um, and it should be a great talk.